In the 2000s, CD undertook a substantial program of rail improvements to allow for improved capacity on its complex rail system. The project, known as the Clearways Project, was highly successful and began a recent revival of Sydney's rail network. I've been meaning to make more videos about interstate projects for a while, so here we are. Let's take a look at the City Rail Clearways Project. In 2003, the Waterfall Rail disaster occurred in the southern suburbs of Sydney. This disaster saw a four-car Tangara train topple over after the driver lost consciousness, killing seven people and injuring 40. Subsequently, there were major safety improvements done to the network, but in turn, for various reasons, on-time running significantly reduced. As a result, the government decided to undertake various projects to improve the capacity of the system. This will be known as the Clearways Project. The main intention of the Clearways Project was to separate the 14 interconnecting rail lines on the Sydney system into five independent Clearways. The Clearways would not share any track or infrastructure with other Clearways, allowing for much improved reliability and frequency. But for my Melbourne viewers, think something similar to the Network Development Plan's Ultimate Stage 4 in 2012, with independent lines running from everywhere to everywhere else. The projects, however, instead of including large underground rail tunnels or addition of major sections of extra track, included more simple things like new turnback platforms and duplication on some lines. We'll have a look at each of the projects now based on the clearway they were on. The first clearway was the eastern suburbs and Illawarra line. This line would have actually had any changes to its existing route, but there were still a few projects along it. This included the Bondi Junction turn back and stabling, and the duplication on the Cronulla line. Prior to the project, the Bondi Junction station had capacity of only 14 trains per hour, which was significantly limiting compared to the line capacity of 20 trains per hour. Improving the capacity to 20 trains per hour was done through construction of scissor crossovers on the up or city side of the station, as well as laying track in sections of unused tunnel beyond the station, originally intended for use on the full line towards Kingsford. This allowed for additional stabling for five eight-car trains to be stabled beyond the station. This was completed in July 2006. The other project on this line was the Sutherland to Cronulla duplication. Up until the 1980s, the entire branch line was single track. However, in 1985, a section between Gymea and Caringbar was duplicated to improve capacity, but the remaining sections of single track were not duplicated until the Clearways project, which saw sections from Sutherland to Gymea and Caringbar to Cronulla duplicated, along with rebuilding stations at Woolaware, Kirrawee and an upgrade to Cronulla station. This was completed in April 2010. The second clearway was the Bankstown clearway. Prior to the project, the Inner West Line, as it was called, operated from the City Circle to Liverpool via Strathfield, while the Bankstown Line operated via Bankstown. This resulted in Bankstown trains sharing large sections of track with other lines on the network. However, this clearway would break the loop of the Inner West Line, with Bankstown trains to terminate at Lidcombe and Liverpool. The main projects for this was construction of a turnback platform at Lidcombe Station to allow for Bankstown trains to terminate there, along with the second turnback at Liverpool to improve capacity. Along with this, a new turnback was constructed at Homebush to allow trains to terminate from the former Inner West Line, now part of the airport and South Clearway. Finally, the section of track between Sydenham and Erskineville was to have two extra tracks added to separate Bankstown trains from the future Campbelltown Express Clearway. The Lidcombe turnback was completed in 2010, Homebush in 2011, Liverpool in 2014, but the two extra tracks from Sydenham to Erskineville were never completed. The next two clearways were the Campbelltown Express and Airport and South clearways. The Campbelltown Express clearway would have seen trains run from MacArthur to Reevesby stopping all stations, and then express from Reevesby to Sydenham Station to Redfern and then into the City Circle. On the other hand, the Airport and South clearway began at Reevesby stopping all stations to the City Circle via the airport, and then out via Strathfield, Lidcombe, Granville, Liverpool and finally terminating at Glenfield. I believe that trains from Glenfield would have run express from Burwood to Redfern stopping only at Newtown, while trains from Homebush would stop all stations. Projects required for this included quadruplication from Kingsgrove to Reevesby to separate stopping all stations Reevesby and Express Campbelltown trains, two extra tracks from Sydenham to Erskineville to allow for the permanent operation of Campbelltown Express trains via Sydenham, and a fourth platform and upgrade at MacArthur for Campbelltown Express trains. While for Airport and South trains, there would be a turn back and stabling at McDonald Town as well as a turn back at Reevesby. Quadruplication from Kingsgrove to Reevesby was completed in 2013, while an upgrade at MacArthur was completed in 2010, but the new platform was never completed. Six tracks from Erskineville to Sydney never ended up being built, but the turn back at McDonald Town was completed in 2005, the stabling in 2007, and the Reevesby turn back in 2008. The final clearway was the North West Clearway. 
This would have allowed trains to run from the west at Richmond, Penrith or Epping through the city in North Sydney then up to Chatswood, with one branch heading out to Hornsview via Epping and a second branch heading up to Barawa via Gordon. There were only two projects for this, a fifth platform at Hornsby which was completed in 2009 and duplication from Quakers Hill to Vineyard on the Richmond line, which was completed from Quakers Hill to Schofields in 2011, but the section out to Vineyard was deferred three years prior in 2008. The last Clearways project was the Carlingford Line Passing Loop. The Carlingford Line only had a short section of duplication from Clyde to near Rose Hill, and beyond that was single track, severely limiting frequency. As a result, a passing loop would be provided at Rydalmere in order to allow for much more frequent services. In the end, this was cancelled in 2008, and the Carlingford Line was eventually closed in 2020 to make way for light rail, which is a whole other video in itself and probably not for this channel. The Carlingford line would not have been included in a clearway, the same as the Olympic Park and Cumberland lines. With completion of the last project that was not cancelled in 2014, the system was much improved, and by this point many of the ageing S-set trains that were all too common in the 2000s had also been retired, providing new trains to go along with new infrastructure. Since then, the Sydney Metro project is also being worked on, providing a complete new rail system to deal with Sydney's growing population, and also in a sense reviving some of the abandoned clearways projects, such as additional tracks from Sydney to the city. The project was an interesting way to combat bad reliability and capacity, but it was certainly very successful and continues to provide many improvements to the city rail network in the long term, even though City Rail itself never lived long enough to actually see the completion of the project. So that's the City Rail Clearways project. I've been meaning to make more videos about other cities for a while, but I haven't got around to it, so I think it was about time to do this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed, and you'll see other videos soon, including obviously some more Melbourne ones.